That's crazy, man. Is that a Shia Sunni rubbish? No, nah, there's a Gulf Arab and an Egyptian. Oh. Yeah, so wherever you think we're away from the noise. Yeah. Just tell me when. Content over everything. Okay, the nature of Speaker's Corner, as you know, is very much a free-ranging discussion. So it's one of the beauties anybody can come in and participate. And basically that's what happened when we took the subject away from where I was taking it. The subject was taken away, actually, from where I was taking it. And what I want to say is this. I am worried about the possibility of another genocide, like the Rwandese genocide in 1994. I'm worried about that when you start demonizing people along ethnic lines, then collective punishment becomes permissible. And people who are witnesses to such atrocities will have been softened up to consider this their just deserts. The victims will be thought of as people who have deserved this sort of treatment. So what I'm saying here in regard to this event where over a hundred Fulani were massacred in Mali by Dogon militia is that anyone seeking to automatically support agricultural farmers over pastoral nomads and anyone seeking to automatically determine their allegiance along the lines of religion is divisive and is preparing the ground in Africa for a genocide, in particular in this case against the Fulani peoples who stretch from Senegal in the west to Sudan in the east along what we call the Sudan Corridor, the Sahel, and what I have earlier described as that hippo trench that has been created, that virtual split, crack, rift across the continent running west to east, north of which the people identify as Muslims and for that read jihadism and the people to the south of it identify as Christians and for that read evangelism. So we have crusaders versus jihadis and the real problem becomes ignored. The problem where sedentarists, the poor agricultural farmers in Africa, have their farms invaded by livestock from herdsmen who have no choice because the land to the north where once they pastured and watered their animals is now dry. It has become desert. And so it is an unfortunate co uh, conflict uh, that these people have been brought into collision. But this is a clash of political and socio-economy, not a clash of ethnicity as it is being interpreted to be, and certainly not a clash of religions, as it will be later discussed. That is how you will read it in the press, that Muslim Fulani are in conflict with Christian Dogon, or if the Dogon are not Christian, whoever else they're fighting in Nigeria, where in Benue State, where they're fighting, it's been interpreted already as a Christian-Muslim divide. And I want to say to our people, let us exercise nuance and strive for proportion when analyzing these issues, lest we find ourselves encouraging, aiding, and abetting in another African genocide. Thank you for your kind attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Content over everything. Content over everything. From Yabu Benami. Yeah. Come, man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC.
man don't listen to ITV. You know, so let us understand. Okay. Listen, Prophet Muhammad SAW said, لا تزلوا إيش. طائفة. He didn't say the whole Ummah. There will be a group of my Ummah. So my advice, the last advice to everyone here, sometimes, sometimes we say things that which make it seem to the layman is good. But nothing is good, especially when it comes to deen, except Let me say something that you're going to agree with. Yes. Based upon the Quran Sunnah, which is, let us go back and study. Because a brother came to me, alhamdulillah, we done a talk to the youth.